Annabelle Lee by Edgar Allan Poe. It's a, this one is a uplifting poem. Oh, yes. Yeah, whenever oh, yeah. I'm down now, I read this. All about death and obsession. <laughs> <laughs> Annabelle Lee by Edgar Allan Poe. It was many and many a year ago in a kingdom by the sea that a maiden there lived, whom you may know, by the name of Annabelle Lee. And this maiden, she lived with no other thought than to love and to be loved by me. She was a child and I was a child in this kingdom by the sea, but we loved with a love that was more than love, I and my Annabelle Lee, with a love that the winged seraphs no. of heaven coveted her and me. And this was the reason that long ago in this kingdom by the sea, a wind blew out of a cloud by night, chilling my Annabelle Lee, so that her highborn kinsmen came and bore her away from me and shut her up in a sepulcher in this kingdom by the sea. The angels, not half so happy in heaven, went envying her and me. Yes, that was the reason, as all men know, in this kingdom by the sea, that the wind came out of the cloud, chilling and killing my Annabelle Lee. But our love, it was stronger by far than the love of those who were older than we, of many far wiser than we. And neither the angels in heaven above nor the demons down under the sea can ever dissever my soul from the soul of the beautiful Annabelle Lee. For the moon never beams without bringing me dreams of the beautiful Annabelle Lee. And the stars never rise, but I see the bright eyes of the beautiful Annabelle Lee. And so, all the night tide, I lie down by the side of my darling, my darling, my life and my bride, in her sepulchre there by the sea, in her tomb by the side of the sea. <laughs> Creepy! <laughs> I'm reading a poem by E.E. E. Cummings, also known uh, yes. as Edward Estlin <laughs> Cummings, apparently. <laughs> the poem is called Anyone Lived in a Pretty How Town. Anyone lived in a pretty how town with up so floating many bells down. Spring, summer, autumn, winter, he sang his didn't, he danced his did. Women and men, both little and small, cared for anyone not at all. They sowed their isn't, they reaped their same. Sun, moon, stars, rain. Children guessed, but only a few, and down they forgot as up they grew. Autumn, winter, spring, summer, that no one loved him more by more. Wind by now and tree by leaf, she laughed his joy and cried his grief. Bird by snow and stir by still, anyone's any was all to her. Someone's married their everyone's, laughed their cryings and did their dance. Sleep, wake, hope, and then. They said their nevers, they slept their dream. Stars, rain, sun, moon, and only the snow can begin to explain how children are apt to forget to remember with up so floating many bells down. One day anyone died, I guess, and no one stopped, uh, stooped to kiss his face. Busy folk buried them side by side, little by little, and was by was. All by all, and deep by deep, and more by more, they dream their sleep. No one and anyone, earth by April, with by spirit, and if by yes. Women and men, both dong and ding, summer, autumn, winter, spring, reaped their sowing, and went there came sun, moon, stars, rain. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Lovey. <laughs> so this is a short story I've never read before by a woman named Catherine Brush. It is entitled The Birthday Party. It's my birthday. Is it your birthday? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they were a couple in their late 30s. And they looked unmistakably married. Much like me and my husband. <laughs> they sat on the banquet opposite us in a little narrow restaurant having dinner. The man had a round, self-satisfied face with glasses on it. The woman was fadingly pretty in a big hat. Everybody's seen the uh, royal weddings recently. <laughs> can imagine the big hats. 
There was nothing conspicuous about them. Nothing particularly noticeable until the end of their meal. When it suddenly became obvious this was an occasion for the big O. <laughs> In fact, the husband's birthday. And the wife had planned a little surprise for him. It arrived in the form of a small but glossy birthday cake with one pink candle burning in the center of it. <laughs> the head waiter brought it in and placed it before the husband. Meanwhile, the violin and piano orchestra played happy birthday to you. And the wife beamed with a shy pride over her little surprise. And such a few people as there were in the restaurant tried to help out with the patterning of applause. It became clear at once that help was needed because the husband was not pleased. Instead, he was hotly embarrassed and indignant at his wife for embarrassing him. You looked at him and you saw this and thought, oh now, don't be like that. But he was like that. And as soon as the little cake had been deposited on the table and the orchestra had finished the birthday piece, the general attention had shifted from the man and the woman and I saw him say something to her under his breath, some punishing thing, quick and curt and unkind. I couldn't bear to look at the woman then, so I stared at my plate and I waited for quite a long time. Not long enough though. She was still crying when I finally glanced over there again crying quietly and heartbrokenly and hopelessly all to herself under the gay big brim of her best hat. Thank you. <laughs>